Welcome friends. <clears throat> so uh, the journey into homelessness is over and uh, the journey in homelessness um, has just begun. So this is my uh, first video uh, post Bhikkhu ordination uh, which happened way back in October. So uh, we have um, about four months or so uh, that I've been a bhikkhu. And I wanted to just kind of give, a, I guess, a little a little recap of my experience, um, you know, since I made that last video a couple of weeks before my ordination. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, in that last video, I said um, that I started to see the rules as like a shield, like a, a protection, um, a cloak, however you want to put it. And, um, you know, I had some worries uh, before taking on this shield and, or putting this cloak on. Um, but actually, those worries are pretty much gone, um, <clears throat> which is pretty cool. Um, the, you know, the, you know, I had the thoughts that I had before is, oh, can I, can I actually live with the, you know, under all these rules and all these kind of things? And uh, the answer so far has been yes. Um, that's not to say I haven't broken any of the rules, actually. <laughs> I think uh, my second day, um, I ended up breaking one of the rules. And, and so I had to, you know, do my first confession. Um, you know, I went to uh, one of the monastics and they said, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I broke this rule. And, uh, and then that was that. <clears throat> and so that's what another thing that I've come to see <clears throat> these monastic rules are uh, very akin to like lay people who, when they take the five precepts, right? They're not, um, <clears throat> they're training rules. So these monastic rules, um, you know, of course we have the four, um, four Parajikas, which are the defeats, right? You do one of those four and you're, um, not, and you're not a monk for life. And you have Sangha de Sesas, which are more serious. <clears throat> where you become, you go into like a probation, um, that accounts for 17 of the 227 rules. And the vast majority of those other rules are, <clears throat> are um, you know, uh, fixed by confession. And I'm coming to see the reason for that is because they're, they're, they're helping you, they're molding you into this person who... <clears throat> is um, basically a, a, a vessel for the Dhamma, um, molding you into little by little, bit by bit, part of this gradual training, molding you into somebody who is on the path to awakening. And, you know, that has helped me because I, I, I realize, you know, why these rules are in, in place. Um, <clears throat> You know, I uh, have, you know, the Buddha uh, in the suttas is talking uh, when, when he talks about his disciples and he says that they are afraid to break even the smallest of rules. And um, <clears throat> that is <clears throat> something that uh, is actually hard to, <laughs> to be afraid to break even the smallest of rules. You have to really... Um, really, really focus and really kind of see the danger of even the smallest rule. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of grappling with that. And, and um, you know, I've actually, in many ways, I've been letting my conscious be my guide. Um, the, you know, for instance, uh, one of the rules, you know, monks can't start a fire. Um, and so <clears throat> that is a rule that if I break, I have to confess. And and you know we have a fire pit here and, and so basically you know, the first time after i was a monk we were up at the fire pit and i put the fire together and like i have you know dozens and dozens of times in my life uh you know i had created fires and stuff like that campfires um <clears throat> and there i was as a, as a monk and i was i, you know, I had the lighter against the rules and I mean and, and and I've studied the rules I've studied the the bunga which is the the full um all the stories and all of the 
the, the variations of the rules and all of that kind of stuff. I've studied that. I've, I've read through that multiple times. I've read through the Vinaya, which is just the rules themselves, probably, you know, at least six or seven times. And, and you know, I started reading all this stuff years before I even moved to the monastery because I knew I wanted to be a monk. So I knew, <coughs> I knew the ins and outs of this rule. And I, I knew that, you know, uh, on the one hand, I understood the, the story behind it. Um, but, and so w what I did was I let my conscience kind of be my guide. I had the, the lighter and I was really conflicted. Should I do this? And you know what? I said, okay, I did it. And I examined my, my conscious. I examined my thoughts afterwards. I examined my thoughts during. <clears throat> and, and so that's, I've done that a couple of times to, uh, you know, since I've been a monk, to really kind of gauge, you know, okay, so I can say this is a minor rule, but what does my conscience say? What is my kiri and otapa, my moral shame and, and dread? What does that say when I actually do something that breaks even the smallest rule? Um, and, you know, I sort of examined my, uh, my mind on that. And, you know, I've also... Um, I spent a couple weeks uh, out in the world. Um, you know, I had a, a retreat. I'm at the retreat that I did in New York, and um, I was invited to a, a Catholic college to spend a day there and um, help them out and, and teach meditation and do all kinds of stuff. And so I've been examining and, and really kind of seeing how what it's like to to be in the world living by these you know, living as a monastic, um, and it's not easy, it's not easy at all, um, <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, you know, it's something that uh, takes a lot of years and a lot of experience and wisdom, I think, to fully understand um, the, the depth and the breadth of, of, of these rules and, and how you live um, as a monastic, uh, and, you know, in, especially in, in the West, in, in these modern times, um, where things can be a little different um, than in traditional Buddhist countries. Uh, and I was just reading a, um, I was just reading an article by uh, a venerable Bante who came to America, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and, and how he, you know, has uh, adjusted the the monastic rules in ways that, you know, to in terms of culture and custom. And, and how it, it's different in the West, like, for instance, like p shaking people's hands, um, <clears throat> you know, how, you know, uh, you know they, there's not necessarily a rule that says you can't, that if a woman or a man, you know, in the West, that shaking hands is normal, right? I mean, that's just how you do it. There, there's nothing, um, and, you know, in the East, it's, that's not how you do it, you know, in the East, you know, even most people, as far as I know, traditionally, you don't, you know, you do Anjali or something to that effect, or you bow, you don't shake hands. So there's a, there's a cultural aspect to that. And, uh, you know, I've seen, uh, uh, you know, people, people, uh, you know, in the West, they come up and they just go like this. And, you know, I've said, okay, well, let me see how, you know, again, checking my conscience, checking how I feel about it. Let me see how it feels. And I just shake the person's hand and that's that. Um, and, you know, and, and this Venerable Bhante, he's a Mahatera, he's been a monk, you know, decades and decades. And, uh, you know, he talked about, and, and know how that, <clears throat> you know, in his, or, you know, he's a Sri Lankan uh, person. And, and so he talked about how the conflicts between how his, culture and tradition views how a monk is supposed to be versus uh, a monk being in the West. So it's, uh, you know, it's, these are all kinds of aspects of, of my, my thought and, and what I've been doing uh, in terms of living by these monastic rules. And uh, it's been an interesting experience. Um, you know, there's, it's, I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. It's easy, but yet it's not easy at the same time. Um, and you know, years ago, 
Uh, I was watching a, a video from uh, the Venerable Yitzhadamo, and, and he said that the, you know, the monastic life is was the hardest thing that he's ever done, and, and he wanted it you know, wanted to be hard because it's supposed to be um, you know going against the stream, and, and you know obviously uh, in my very very short experience. Um, of that I can, you know, I kind of understand a little bit, you know, th th I have so long to go, I'm so new to this, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm maybe not so much of a young man, but I'm certainly a young monk, so um, I realize that I'm going to make mistakes, and I realize that my points of view um, are going to change over time, and, and things that I might, you know, not take as seriously now, Maybe I go through an experience and I realize, okay, now I understand. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do it this way from now on instead of that way. So I have a lot to learn, um, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully, as I, uh, you know, as I live this life and, and continue to do what I'm doing, um, it allows me to develop along the path and uh, go from there. So. Uh, but otherwise, in terms of my daily life, um, you know, my, my life hasn't changed much at all, really. I, you know, um, I'm still here at the monastery, still doing, you know, still doing work, um, still maintaining the monastery. The only thing that's a little different is that I've started to be invited to places um, to give talks and all these kind of things. So that's that's a little different. Um, but otherwise, you know, I'm, I've been giving, you know, I've been participating and giving talks and Q and A's at the retreats here for a year. Um, so, and you know, that's going to continue as now all the the young monastics, um, you know, are taking a, a stronger role here um, at Bhavana. So, uh, I guess that's pretty much it for my update. You know, it's m mostly um, surrounding how you know how I adapt myself. To these rules um, and how I uh, live by these rules in modern society and uh, you know I obviously look towards uh, those monastics who have been doing this for a long time like Bhante G um, you know to uh, to get their opinions on things because there, there's a couple different things to go there's there's the rules as you see it in the vineyard then there's the rules, uh, you know, the, 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 the commentary on the rules and, and how the rules, how the tradition, the cultural tradition of those rules have come down from time. Um, you know, for instance, like uh, women touching the monks, you know, in, in Thailand, you know, there's not supposed to be any contact if something's given, that, you know, you give it with. Um, like a cloth and all that kind of stuff. In Sri Lanka, you just, you know, you just, they just give stuff. So there's like, there's a variety of ways that <clears throat> different countries, different traditions interpret and follow these rules. So part of, you know, me, uh, part of my, my journey here has been <clears throat> learning the letter of these rules. And then understanding how different traditions, different countries, different cultures, different ways of monasticism follow them. And uh, so I like to, to know these things for so that, A, I can fully understand the rules in their full depth and breadth and, and how I can best live by them. <clears throat> and B, when I go to various different places and different traditions, I understand how they follow those rules um, so that I can do so. Um, you know, it behooves me to wherever I am, follow you know, whatever tradition, whatever uh, monastery that I'm staying at in the future, you know, wh whatever has the, the normal way that they follow the rules, that's how I'd like to, you know, follow the rules. It's part of living in community, um, but also part of understanding how these rules, um, you know, affect your life. So friends, I think that's it for now. Um, thank you very much. Until next time, Sukhi Hoshi, may you be happy.